This is the folklore of the hazel tree. So I'm going to start this video by talking about some of the practical and historic applications of this remarkable tree or shrub and then I'm going to talk more about some of the historical magical applications and symbolism and its place in folklore and how these all interrelate. So the hazel's a really interesting tree and has had a relationship with man for a very 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 long time. We know from archaeology that the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers in Britain and Europe, our ancestors broadly, uh, were very fond of hazelnuts. They were a vital resource. They were uh, baked in huge pits in the ground with a fire laid on top of them and then uh, ground into a paste and used as a food through the winter and as a kind of a mobile snack for the hunter-gatherers, kind of like a Mesolithic energy bar. So really, uh, really useful tree. We also know from this because hazel usually grows in fairly open woodland and forest. It does like the shady canopies, but only produces nuts in large quantities if there's enough sunlight. So we know that Britain in the Mesolithic was covered by quite open forest rather than dense canopy. We also know that hazel has been coppiced for a very, very long time. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Uh, so we've had a working relationship with this tree, with this shrub, with this wood for millennia. And that is in coppicing. So coppicing is when you cut a tree back uh, right to its stump and then it grows new growth. And the new growth is quite straight shoots, which are really useful tools. Now the thing is, hazel does this naturally. Uh, it naturally coppices itself. New shoots sprout up from the base of the trunk, so it has a kind of branching bush-like thing. So our early ancestors would have seen this and tried to replicate it. Uh, and if you do it uh, by hand, you know, if you do it, if a, a human does it with, with an axe, um, or a primitive stone or flint axe, it shoots off even more, so it becomes a very useful tool. This is a mutually beneficial relationship. It actually increases the life of the tree. And we now know in terms of sort of biodiversity and rewilding, very kind of on-trend things at the moment, that it improves the health of the woodland to coppice the uh, trees within as well. It just creates different levels of light, increases biodiversity. So coppicing is a very ancient and very good thing that does not harm the natural world, but uh, improves it and provides a vital tool for humanity. So. Not just is it important as a foodstuff, the hazelnuts, but also as a, as a vital tool. So hazel is used, is used and was used for a whole variety of practical applications, making arrows because it's very straight, uh, all sorts of, all sorts of tools. Uh, my partner here has been running a wood carving workshop right here today and she's been using bits of, uh, bits of hazel like this for the, uh, the participants to make butter knives it's very very easy to carve and would have been very easy to carve even with simple flint uh, or complex flint tools. It's also used to make hurdles like this because it's very pliable uh, and it's been used in animal husbandry literally since the Neolithic, since we first started um, uh, animal husbandry. It's portable. You can make portable wattle fencing with this. Even until relatively recently, uh, Welsh shepherds would carry about 10 of these on their backs and go up into the hills and they've got a portable corral for the sheep. We also see evidence of this in uh, 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 used as causeways over water or boggy ground. You think of, of music festivals today where they roll out that sort of metal sheeting so everyone can walk across the mud. Exactly the same Neolithic version with hazel hurdles. So really, really useful tool. It would have been invaluable to our ancestors. So that's some of the practical applications of, the, uh, of, of, of hazel that are still used today. Look at this wattle fencing right here. Bleh. So other practical uses for this that start delving more into magic are use as uh, divining rods. So this is where sort of practical and magical applications kind of overlap. Uh, hazel is a very important tree in folk 
magic and has been for a very long time. Uh, so people will make divining rods out of hazel. Uh, a lot of divining rods are made out of metal like copper and there's two L-shaped ones that cross when you pass over water or maybe even buried treasure. If you look on the Wikipedia article for uh, divining or dowsing, it will call it a pseudoscience. Hmm, uh, I think this is overzealous editors on Wikipedia. We know uh, that this does actually work. We don't really know why it works though. Um, <laughs> I've got a good anecdote about this. Uh, basically, water companies in this part of the world actually employ professional dowsers to find broken leaks underground, which is astonishing, really. It's a bit like, I don't know, the NHS employing homeopathists or something else that is considered a fringe medicine. Um, uh, I know a few local farmers that employ a, maybe a local travelling person or old boy that lives in a caravan at the edge of the woods to get his hazel rod out and um, uh, find a burst pipe. They wouldn't be hiring these guys if it didn't work. Uh, a personal anecdote on, on, on dowsing with hazel. Um, a good fr very good friend of mine, um, his dad is a, a, a local farmer. He's not a witch or he's actually a, a Catholic. Interesting that Catholics once unbanned the use of dowsing because it was a bit too much like witchcraft. You can see their point. Uh, but he has often demonstrated dowsing on his land. And my friend, his son, was very sceptical, more of a scientific kind of outlook. No, 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 this can't be true. Tom, my friend, was given a dowsing rod. He didn't know where the water was. Off he went and vroom, the dowsing rod just knew exactly. So we had to swallow his pride. And even my friend Tom admits there's, there, there must be a scientific explanation for this. But he obviously experienced that it is a phenomena. Uh, with hazel, you normally make a fork. Um, you'll, you'll get a fork of hazel. I don't know, like something like something like this. And you'll cut everything else away and you'll pull it apart so it kind of uh, bites and then it should go down or up if you pass over a underground body of water or stream. So really interesting practical application of hazel there. Uh, hazel is also used in other uh, magical applications or has been used uh, historically as uh, wands or staves. Um, uh, we see this a lot. We see uh, hazel rods being used to drive away witches. Uh, shepherds also often have uh, a hazel switch like this one, uh, just to, to guide their uh, flock and to um, sort of mentally will them where to go. Uh, that's sort of one of the definitions of magic, but also to keep away uh, malevolent forces like wolves. <laughs> uh, we see this in folklore as well, uh, reflected. Uh, so uh, a video I've done on this channel before uh, is a very popular version of a, of a folkloric um, kind of idea called the Sleeping Warriors, where a, uh, a king and his retinue are underground. Uh, there's a Welsh version of this story where that place is indicated by a hazel tree. Uh, a shepherd is walking over London Bridge with his flock and a, 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 a wizard sees the staff and says, where, that, where you got that hazel staff from? great treasure is buried. So again, a folkloric link to the idea of hazel being um, uh, a, a divining implement, a uh, indicator of treasure underground. This is interesting because uh, a lot of uh, hazel symbolism is about intuition and about connecting the conscious mind with the unconscious mind, which is sort of underground right uh, symbolically speaking uh, it's a tree of yeah intuition and inspiration uh, intuiting things not by up here but sort of by down here finding the treasure underground uh, bringing unconscious desires into the conscious realm uh, some of these are more contemporary applications but the association with hazel and knowledge and wisdom is very 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 ancient um, we see this also in Irish mythology. In Irish mythology and the Celtic imagination as a whole, the hazel tree is strongly associated with knowledge. Perhaps this has something to do with this idea of hazel in the very early days of man teaching our ancestors how to use it. This is like the idea of plant intelligence or plant um, guides or plant teachers. It's saying you can coppice me. This is, this is an idea of my own, but sometimes I think um, the natural world tells us how to 
how to use it, what its properties are. And this is certainly the case with hazel, which self coppices. Anyway, I digress. In, um, in, the, in Celtic mythology, or specifically the Irish um, mythology, there are nine hazel trees that drop nine nuts into a pool and these nine nuts contain all the wisdom and knowledge of of uh, of the three realms the number nine is very important in symbolism uh, if three represents kind of the totality of everything already this world the underworld and the overworld then nine is three times three it's kind of everything <laughs> so these nine hazelnuts contain everything um, all knowledge and they're gobbled up by a salmon <laughs> Very important sacred animal to do with wisdom in, in the Celtic mythos. Uh, and this salmon then contains everything and is hunted by a druid who finally catches it. And it's ultimately eaten by Finn McCool, who just has to bite his thumb and has all knowledge. I've told this story on this channel. I'll put a link to it uh, at the end of this video and in the description if you want to hear me tell it properly. It's interesting that Finn is uh, linked with this because in the, um, I think the Scholar's Primer or maybe the Oum Tract, one of the old medieval texts that tell us the associations um, with trees in the various Oum letters, the so-called Celtic tree alphabet, uh, the, uh, the hazel is represented by the, by the K sound, the letter C, Col or K. And this means in the Oum Tract it's, it's, it's given the name hazel. Uh, and also the fairest of the trees. Uh, interesting link to Finn there, whose name Finn means means fair, uh, bright, uh, intelligent. So these kind of associations happening both in, in etymology and, and mythos. Uh, yeah, uh, it's interesting to note when talking about the Oum, the Oum is a system where, where every letter is given a tree. Some of these are more recent, but some of them are, are much, much older. So uh, this association of the K sound with hazel goes back to at least the 10th century. Maybe much, 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 much older to the very, very genesis of this um, symbolic system. Talking about Oum as well, Oum is often today, uh, and possibly historically as well, used for divination. <sighs> I'm getting smoked at by the fire. Um, so perhaps hazel would have been used to make uh, oum sticks. We certainly know that yew was used, we have that from uh, Irish mythology that yew was used to make oum sticks, but perhaps hazel as well because of this association with divination, with uh, prophecy, with, with knowledge, with obtaining knowledge. Uh, so that is what hazel is about, knowledge and, uh, and inspiration, uh, but also intuition. Um, yeah, uh, another interesting link with folklore is, I think this is a Scottish story of the, um, the black dog of the wild forest, where there is a young king's son fleeing from a black dog. <laughs> Sounds like a metaphor for depression. Uh, but anyway, he escapes from the dog over a river and then uses a hazel switch that has been given to him by a witch to tap it on the surface of the water and a bridge raises up of a uh, hazel. Uh, and then he escapes over it. He forgets to um, make the bridge disappear and the dog follows him and ultimately he has to have a battle with this dog and he uses the hazel switch to um, block the dog's mouth. So uh, sort of um, passage over water and warding off evil. Uh, we see this in a lot of Grimm's fairy tales as well, hazel switches being used to ward off snakes and creeping things. Uh, so old associations in the folklore there. I think in Cinderella also a one version of a hazel staff is planted in the ground and a hazel tree grows that gives um gives gifts so again another association with with, with treasure and and divining um and protection there the hazel tree protects them i think it has the mother's energy in it um so really interesting interesting tree really useful tree and lots of associations in myth and folklore to do with intuition guidance knowledge protection really is um, the tree of wisdom in the Celtic imagination. So I think I'm <laughs> speaking to you from a veil of smoke here but uh, if you would like me to hear, uh, if you'd like me to tell you some stories associated with Hazel I'll put a link to them, I've told them on this channel before but finally my friends thank you very much for watching, do please leave a comment if you think I've missed anything and thank you to all my Patreons 
If you want to follow me on Patreon, that would be a huge help. Uh, I will send you, if you're one of my Raven Tier supporters, uh, a wooden gift. Maybe a Oum stick like this one, or perhaps a, uh, uh, a wooden spoon like this one. This one's made from birch, or a butter knife or something. Just reach out to me and ask me what you'd like. Uh, but I would really appreciate that um, support if you are financially able. But no worries if not. Keep watching the videos, my friends. So why not watch this video next on Finn McCool, the hazel tree of wisdom and the salmon of knowledge. Thank you, my friends.